Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 109. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience. What's up, y'all? This is the Hustle of the Year Lido Takeover, man. Uh, director, entrepreneur, multimedia mogul. Um, I like to do a little bit of everything, man. This, this is my partner right here, Jad. Yeah, man. They just call me Jad, man. That's what the people call me. That's what I want everybody to call me. I'm a director, producer, musician, but I am a singer first. You know what I mean, so if anybody, you know, needs some features or something, holla at Takeover Files, holla at Jab, we're we going to make it work. Big fact. Copy that. We got something to talk about off mic once we get this thing done. Now, <laughs> let's hit the rundown. E Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 o'clock on the E Block Radio Network. GFT Radio Network every Tuesday at 2 o'clock. 216 to blend every Wednesday at 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Then we go I Say Podcast Radio Network every Friday, 10 a.m. Then we go Saturday, THC Media, 10 a.m. every Saturday. West Coast, what's happening? Thursdays, Sundays, they wide open for you. Uh, H2H Cleaning, that's my cleaning company. We do roofing, plumbing, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, flooring, carpeting, remodeling, roofing, plumbing. However you need it, we can make that situation happen. Over there at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. Then we go Custom Hustle. That's Custom Hustle World on Instagram. Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Custom jerseys, football, basketball, baseball, hockey. Custom Hustle. We have the sneaks available. You know what I'm saying? They are available up to a 14 and, and in any color. Also, children's sizes available. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you got your girl, you got your, your son, your daughter, however. We will lace them. Uh, sweatsuits, the jerseys, the jackets. We got the spring jackets in. It gets a little warm. You get a brisk summer night. You need a nice joint that you design. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We got all of that love for you. And if you slide past the barbershop now, we got the barber capes in too with all of the logos of the How to Hustle for Prize. You know what I'm saying? We got it all in if you need it. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> this is how you hustle. <laughs> uh, that is at Custom Hustle World though, on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Now, episode 109. We got to start this one off with a shout out to Sam and Si. You know what I'm saying? Big shout, Big out, shout out to Sam, Sam and Si because that's where we met at. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They called you the hustler of the year. And like I told you then and told them, they can't call nobody that while I'm sitting here. Hey. We don't talk about that. <laughs> hey, you're right, right now. <laughs> you already know. I should tell niggas, the man, best thing you can give a nigga is opportunity. You put me in the building and all I need is just give me the mic. And I'm going to put on a show. You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what you did, bro. Because I ain't going to lie. As soon as you got on the mic, your whole ran down, run down was like, yo. Me and Jab was like, bro, we got to we gotta get to know this, boy. Just because, and everything you had on was yours. That's what grabbed my eye first before you even opened your mouth. Big facts. <laughs> and this, John, if you're watching on the e Block Radio Network, GFT Radio Network is going to have video coming soon. It might be, this might be the first one, but you know what I'm saying? This shirt that I got on right mm -hmm. now, you know what I'm saying, is for my brother, Chris Cotton, R.I.P. Chris. Chris made this shirt when Chris was still alive, but you know what I'm saying? His wife threw his name on the joint. So you know what I'm saying? I own everything but this, John, but this is my brother's. You know what I'm saying? I'll say something real quick, man, about Chris Cotton, bro. Rest in peace, Chris Cotton. I was his last interview. Um, before you pass, mm. and uh, dang, bro, just even looking at that interview, we joked about it because we said, bro, we look like Biggie and, and, and Puff or Biggie and Tupac when they were sitting on that couch. You feel me for that picture? Um, so I'm, I'm gonna definitely send you that, man. And I uh, just rest in peace, rest, uh, rest in rest in love, Chris Cotton, man, because that was a, a an amazing man. I ain't even know you. Funny as a mug. Nah, nigga, that whole routine started me and him in the class. That's my that was my best friend since we was nine. Yeah. But this is we off topic. Yeah, <laughs> we off topic. All right? <laughs> our, our episodes are always dedicated to Chris, though. That's my brother, like I said. Um, so big shout out to Chris. Uh now let's stay on track because now damn, I didn't even know that. We need to talk about that. <laughs> um uh. episode 109. How have your expectations changed? Since you said this one kind of threw you for a loop, Jab, we starting with you. <laughs> Let's go. Oh man. Uh you said how did it change my expectations? How did your expectations? How have your expectations? How, they, how have they changed? Mm -hmm. I just I'm quite sure. So, like let's let's set it up for the audience. Okay. I'm quite sure when you was 2022, 20, you had a vision and an idea of how my life is going to turn out. Because you say 10 years from now, damn, I'll be in my mid-30s type time. 
So this is what my uh, expectations are. Now that you've gotten there, though, what have your expectations turned into? Well, uh, uh, I'll have those answer that. Involved and all of that. A little, a little con- it's going to get a little complex, man. So follow me, if you will, man. Uh, Let's go. Get comfortable, baby. You no, know, my, <laughs> my mentor, who uh, I really look up to, man, he told me a man is supposed to be able to do three things, you know, protect, provide, and prepare. Now, a lot of people say a man's job is only to protect or provide. They leave out prepare, man. And I learned that at 30 years old, to add prepare in there. Because a lot of times we just winging it. And our expectations, what we might have had when we were younger, they change from year to year because, you know, our minds are just so fleeting and we can focus on one thing and then something else happens and we go here and we, and we focus on that thing now. We try to focus on so many things that we don't finish anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, you know, uh, my ex- expectations have changed just based on I'm open to learning from somebody above me now, where before I was just trying to do my own thing, you know, uh, kind of be like, I can do it by myself. And you can't do it by yourself, man. You, you, need, you need to be able to learn. Just because you can do it by yourself don't mean that you should do it by yourself, though. Speak on it. Uh. Just because I know, I know I can carry this couch across the room by myself. But <laughs> if I ain't gonna help me get the other end of this joint, why would I say, "Nah, bro, I got it"? Like, right. <laughs> that's just foolish. That's you that's fighting against right. yourself. That's you being in your own way, not mature enough to accept the help and recognize that the help is there. But go ahead, my bad. I didn't mean to jump like on. Like you said, that maturity, man. And that—that's where I was, man. Like it, it took—it took for somebody to actually say that to me. Like, yo. You know you don't gotta do everything by yourself, right? <laughs> and that, I'm ball, that's me, ball dominated guard. <laughs> <laughs> I got it though. You come set the screen, you go around the pick, but I got the ball. <laughs> you need a screen setter though. You need a screen setter. That's an important you have to, absolutely. You need a nigga to drink the Gatorade, a nigga to clap. You need a nigga to do everything. You know what I'm saying yeah, that makes yeah. a team. So and, and it even it even with that, you know, learning to incorporate others. And to achieving a goal is, you know, the ability to focus on one thing at a time. Like, you know, if you, if you focused on something, it'll get done faster if you're focused on that something. But if you're trying to do 10 other things, you it might, it might take a while, <laughs> you know, and then a lot of people be surprised. They've been 10 years have gone by since he was 22 and now you're 32. And you're like, damn, I ain't. Nothing's accomplished. Like everything, I accomplished none of the stuff that I was doing. Yeah, copy. everything's twenty percent done. <laughs> no, that's a fact, right there. Boy. Go ahead, now it's on you. So, um, damn. So, I feel like my expectations actually went back to my original expectations. Now, I say that as far as you know, just coming up. Um, I was I was always an entertainer. Uh, I've been acting since I was six with A and B Productions. So, my mom had me in this field early. So I always understood that hard work paid off. Um, it, it, as long as you put the work in, I believe a God, child of God, God is going to bless you. So with that, then somewhere along that line, I can say I started to feel as though I got so much work, I can chill. Now I'm around these people, I can chill. So I started to feel as though blessings were supposed to or and not, not not even necessarily blessings, um, connections and people and work and clients were supposed to just come because of who I was uh, associated with or because of the work that I put in in the past. And that shit had me really um, in a, I don't want to say a dark place, bro, but just, no, I could say that, bro, in a state of depression for a while, man, you know, and because my expectations was always, you know, work, 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 work. Then I don't know where, but it turned into, all right, I got so much work. I could chill. I start feeling myself. So I say that to say I got back to my root of, no, nah, we need to work no matter what. Because at the end of the day, all this can be taken like that. You feel me? So, it's, I mean, and, and, and even on life, um, family, I'll go there. My expectation, expectation of family has, has... Man, just we live in a social media world. Um, I'm the type of man I, I watch my mother, my stepfather, who I would never call my stepfather because that's my dad. He's been there since I was two. But I've watched them marry my pop raised two kids that's not his, have his own, put people together 
uh, uh, put a, a friend here and an aunt here. Now I got a bunch of little cousins, but I saw that work for 30 years. So that was something I always wanted. But then my work didn't align with what I wanted. You get what I'm saying? You follow me? I'm with you. Yeah. So my so work didn't allow didn't allow me to look for that that family that wife. I'm a relationship bull. <laughs> you feel me? Oh, uh, I'm a cancer. You know what I'm saying? So so Damn, nigga, me too. <laughs> yeah, I, I love, I, listen, one thing you I call said, Cuff Daddy Lido. Yeah, I'm Cuff here, Daddy right? Lido, man. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care about a lot, man. But when I care, I care, bro. So so I say that to say, you know, just expectations. Shit, that's me. Bro, 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 bro. And it's just like I, I don't know, bro, because it's just in our heart, man. Like when people come with every into every situation with no malice, you know, not looking to 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 break somebody. Uh, not looking to do any dirt or any weird stuff, you know, we love that. That's that's just a heart because not everybody has that. So it's just it's, ah, shit, like I said, because you're talking about me. Um, when you come into the situation and you're looking at it from a we perspective and not a me perspective, always, mm. and that's a whole different way for people to people don't even know how to accept that that's what you're doing. I got. Something I got something yes just yesterday. Somebody I talked to and told me they got an opportunity about some different things. And me just calling niggas just yo, look, this is an opportunity for you, not even something for me, because I'ma be there. I don't know if you're gonna be there, but I'm telling you so you can slide too. Some niggas don't even know, like if this boy is calling me, this is he's not calling me because he needs something from me. He's got something for me. You know and he wants to add to me, he don't want to take from me. Some mm-hmm. people don't know how to receive that. Some people do not accept that. Like I said, you can get that couch cross the room yourself, but you got two, three other niggas who just waiting for you to call and say, yo, bro, I need a little help with that. They go, damn, that's all you need? Right. Like, and you that's know what I, I had to learn that too, bro. Like Something that, that you said triggered this to me too. That's why I said I ain't saying nothing because I'm going to let you ride. Uh, me and my man was having this conversation yesterday where he was like, and I had a situation where I lost this one and I lost that one. And I kind of was in a state where I felt like I couldn't express myself. And I'm like, yeah, but who did you allow to be there for you in that situation? People quick to always say, wasn't nobody there for me when I had needed them for this, that, and whatever. But who did you allow right. to be in that situation to help you? Bro, and, like, and you want to know something crazy, bro? I was going through this right before my brother Jack. That's why this was my partner. You feel me? He moved to Florida. He was already in tap, tap. And we was when, uh, before he moved to Florida. He moved back home, but it's like God. I always said them, bro. I feel like God sends you here for a reason. You feel me? Because, bro, my mind was just in like I, I put so much on my plate. You feel me? And I try to help so much that a lot of times my plate always overflow. You feel me? So to have somebody where I could be like, "Yo, bro, I'm fucked up mentally right now," and it's like I don't even care. I know you're not gonna judge, but I don't care if you judge me. You feel me? But I just need somebody to talk to, and for him to just step into the role. And, bro, his second day he moved back from Florida, we had the podcast. I got a whole set. He's running the set like he – like, they was there for him. You feel me? So it's just like you 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 need people, man. It's, it's nothing wrong with picking up the phone. It's nothing wrong with fi- confining in somebody. You feel me? But you got to know who you're talking to. And real quick, just to touch on this. I got to know your personnel. Shout out. Rico always say that. Shout out to my bro. And, and, I, and I definitely want to get this just as far as about uh, having expectations. Um, I've learned that – to live life without expectation because expectation leads to disappointment. When you expecting things, most times it's not going to go how you expect. Nigga just, I how it's supposed nigga to just stepped on my answer, y'all. Oh, hey. uh, man, my fault, bro. Hey. Listen, that's how it happened, But even, even look, even, bro, my Uncle Tito, my Uncle Tito's my hero, bro. And he told me this so when I started TakeOver. You feel me? Your expectation leads to disappointment. You feel me? Go, whoever you want to talk to, with, don't expect them to say yes. That's probably why I only got one no, Le'Veon Bell. You feel me? <laughs> and that was just because of what was going on with the team. But when you're not expecting somebody to say yes, you're not expecting anything, I just feel like it's a lot easier on you, whether that's your mental, whether that's your stress levels. You feel me? Because you're not – you feel me. You feel me, hype. This nigga just killed me, y'all. All right. Uh, I, so but That's the first thing I thought of when I saw it, bro, like, had, when you send me the joint, first of all, hype is a professional. You feel me? He got the top everything. Like, you know what I mean, and it's like, 
Please have just read the link when I send it to you, y'all, because everything's there. Copy. Real <laughs> so it's just like seeing that have your ex- expectations changed. My 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 mind said all right, automatically was like, man, you're not supposed to have no expectations. But then I had to go back to my root. Well, wait, where did I get that from? Damn, my uncle Tito. So before that, what was my expectations? All right, then it shifted. So that's how I, I tried to build it into, you know what I'm saying? All right. So here's my answer for it. Life taught me that expectations just fucks you up because if you expect shit from people, then all that does is have a barrier where this is where they're going to let you down at. Yeah. So it took me a very long time to realize that Um, because like you said, I don't care about a lot of shit, but the shit that I care about, I really care too much. Hard. And and my whole thing be like, I can't care about your situation more than you do. Mm-hmm. And I found myself caring about other people's situations a lot more than they did. And yeah. The shit that, like you just said, that this is where our difference hit was I got that woman. Like you said, all of my drive and all of that. I've been this boy since I was nine with got an autograph book and start selling bean pies at Juma with my brother older than me working for me. Now we about to hit the barbershops to see if we can make the same situation happen. Same barbershop. You can go see, you know what I'm saying? Those uh, how to hustle enterprise, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Capes are in there yeah. right now. And it's various colors and all of that. Um, that same barbershop, though. Used to slide past there when I was nine with bean pies in '96. You know what I'm saying? Trying to see if we can make something happen, but the expectation, my expectations of people were like so high, or not even really. Should I say so high? Because it's like I'm the type of person who you call it. Everybody calls for everything, right. and it's like them. Well, like I just said, now that I'm calling you and telling you, yo, I need you to do this, and you don't meet that expectation, and this is not even too crazy of a request that I'm making, now I feel like we got a problem. Because right. the 20 times, the, I'm going to say 20, the thousands of times you called me versus the three times I called you, you couldn't move for me the two times that I needed you. These were the expectations that I put on you, though, and that's my fault, not yours. Right. So that's how I looked at it. It was life has taught me not to expect anything. Now, mm. like I also stated, like when we met, all I need is the opportunity to be in the room with whoever it is. I ain't the person who's impressed by whoever and whatever. Like everybody put their pants on one leg at a time. Unless you got some new situation where you jumping down from the top of the bunk beds or something. I'm cool. I don't want to do that. Big niggas like me will tear a hamstring. (laughs) So I feel that (laughs) for me, it's like, it ain't even like really an arrogance thing. It's like, no, I really know what I'm talking about, what I'm doing and how I want to do it. And I also understand that everybody does not see the vision. So again, if I put my expectations of you to see the vision that I have and you don't see it, then that's my fault for thinking that you should have saw it. No, I expect that you're not going to see it. I expect that you're not going to understand. I expect that I'm going to have to show you, damn, hype is on episode 109. I thought you was going to be BSing like like a lot of people do with a podcast. We get to episode seven and then they ain't had a post in 300 weeks. (laughs) That's how you see who they're for you too. Mm-hmm. I mean, copy. And, and you, once you, people always say my circle, my circle, my circle. Your circle is really like a square because your circle really includes like six people. Right. And that's usually like your mom or your dad, that cousin that you've always been locked in, Maybe. that friend. That, you, know what I'm you got about six people really in that corner. And then you got a bunch of niggas who just happen you walk to the ring. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How many niggas do you see when a fight is going on? There's a thousand niggas walking you to the ring. But once you're inside there in the corner, it's a couple of people. You know what I'm saying? So that's what my expectations, what life has taught me about my expectations is don't have expectations of people. So that when shit happens, it's like, like you said, I'm, I just told you I'm late because I was praying. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? When things happen, I'm just, I'm the lad. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) You was with it or you did this or you know what I'm saying? Like we got something to build on with the situation. Excuse me. <laughs> but a reason I another my fault, bro. Um, once I get into you know what I'm saying, but um, I was in a situation. You feel me? With, with somebody I was working with when it was like, yo, whenever I needed them, they were they was there, they was there, always there. You feel me? But when they needed me, I wasn't always available to be there. You know what I'm saying? And it was like this, and that's where I'm agreeing with you as far as the expectation. Also, but you never know what people are going through. You never know what's on the other side of that. You because that goes back to, did they allow you to be there for the situation? But, Was but it he, something that you could have helped with or not? Yeah, yeah. No, I feel that. Because, mm. like, I lost, I, I'll give you an example for me. I lost my dad. I was 22. 
me and my wife just having a conversation on the way here and it was like how did that go as far as you know like your first birthday or the first father's day and all of that and i'm like yeah you kind of like you'll definitely remember damn last year this happened or that happened he called this he said that you'll remember all of those different things but also you got to remember you'll always look around at them day, them couple of days especially for us janaz has happened in two three days and now we already at the cemetery so it's like you being a fog and a blur but you definitely remember he was there he was there he wasn't there she didn't call me like you know what I'm saying you definitely will remember that but in those situations sometimes it's not even enough for you to be there for sometimes that just that text of yo bro i was thinking about you yo y'all good over there because you can't be at everything once you got real life happening you got your own companies and things going on and you got kids and a wife or a husband if it's a female like you can't be at everything i can't be there for everything right. but just knowing like damn they at least was thinking about me damn they at least cared enough to reach out to me is a huge thing once you get to this age and stage of life that's a fact bro a thousand percent agree yeah be quiet over here bro let's go you got something for me you uh, gotta have something there's all this stuff that we just said i'm gonna add something on the end of that uh, <laughs> uh a guy an author that i follow uh, his name is craig Rochelle. he says uh it's not that we as people don't have enough time is that uh, we give time to the things that matter most. So I always feel like if somebody slights you, you feel slighted, you don't matter as much to them as you think you do. But you also can't expect yourself from others either. You can say, oh, I would have did that for you. Well, no, you can't. That, that's what you would have did. That's you know? your own expectations, yeah. Right. You can't expect yourself from other people. That's the fact. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know what? Uh, it's 24 hours in a day, man. <laughs> you make my wife told me this one day. Most. My wife told me this one day, like uh some such and such ain't your best friend. I'm like, I never said that he was my best friend. I'm the best friend he has. Like, <laughs> there's a difference there. He has me as a friend. I don't have me as a friend to call or to handle different situations. Like <laughs> he has that, or she right. has that, which is why they're saying that. And, My bad, house phone rings every episode. <laughs> and there ain't nothing wrong with that, you feel me? Everybody plays a role in, in everyone's life. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a role. Um, everyone, some people have seasons. Some people are supposed to be there for the whole book. Some people are supposed to be there for two chapters, you know what I'm saying? But when you know the role that a person serves in your life, once you like really can acknowledge that role, utilize that shit you feel me because people are there for reasons you know what i'm That's saying future, this is a future episode that we're going to get into and in probably in the teens of the one teens <laughs> okay. and how to hustle podcast that's already written down that's why i didn't need to grab the phone and start writing that one, that one's already written down hey bro you, <laughs> uh, you, you really got this shit. we gonna talk about it, but man hey, i'm gonna stay on topic bro because it's just so much that i want to say that even being on this platform i'm admiring about how you you, you have your setup, you feel me, how you prepare. Uh, like Jad was saying, you feel me, that's one of the roles of a man, you feel me, that's not necessarily preparing just with your family and life, like you prepare mm -hmm. with everything that you do, that's why you are producing the way you're producing, not just on the podcast scale, but on the apparel business, you feel me, so that's, that's I just want to give you a flowers real quick on that, bro. I'm glad that you put a pen in that one, because I was thinking that one too, when he threw that out there, because that was a gem off the top of the episode. Mm -hmm. uh, preparation is everything it doesn't matter what it is that you're going to do if we're going to sell oatmeal cookies on the side outside the crib we need to know that the young boy down the street with the water ice stand only got chocolate chip right you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the preparation is everything no matter how small or big it is just like i told you when people are gonna read that i got you on the podcast they're going to automatically assume that we're just going to talk hustle because that's what they get out of both of us and if we give them that then we just can't, we met their expectation, which it would be bad on us. We need to give you a whole different perspective and make you go, damn, I didn't even think they was going to go there. <laughs> I didn't right. think that they had that in them. That shows that homework one that you were doing before we hit record, that shows the versatility and the ability to be able to make anything happen because everything's a hustle. Everything is a hustle <laughs> and everything is work. Hey. And what they say, if it's uh. What they say, I was I was watching a Super Bowl. Uh, this was a couple of years. The the Chiefs' first Super Bowl. I forgot who they played, but the Honey Badger, he made a statement to one of the linebackers. He was like, if somebody told you, in the, 
The Niners, yeah. He was like, if somebody told you in the beginning of the season it would be hard, would you still want it? Uh, Absolutely. You feel me? Bring that home. Yeah. Think. If if it's hard, then that means we're gonna appreciate it once we get the celebration and the confetti's fall. I know I am. Hey, you know, I, 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 I'm I getting you, to this confetti. <laughs> I appreciate your crib if you ain't never struggled on rent. You feel me? Yeah. I appreciate your car if you ain't never had trouble putting gas in that motherfucker. So yeah, I, I look at everything, bro, just in life as a I like I was I forgot who I was telling, but you we just gotta embrace struggles, man. Like we live in a social media world where everybody put their best post out, their best picture, something that they probably did four or five times. And it's just like everybody's so wrapped up in life looking perfect on these apps and on these phones. But in real life, people be going through shit, man. Life be life and speak on it. Shout out to hey, listen, life be life and it's that's my folks. Shout out to Nah. You know I'm saying the big niche. They was on they was on last week's episode. You know what I'm saying? Shout oh, out to Life Be Life. But nah, that's really support that. Philly. That's my man. Nutmeg, nah. Yeah, nah. You thought it was sliding without throwing that one in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, this is the part where we uh, switch up the episode and we talk about what Get you it. got going on. Let's talk about the takeover files. Tell us about the takeover files. Man, so takeover files actually about to drop uh tonight, nine o'clock, episode eight, season 15. Um, the takeover files, real quick, is a network. Uh, we started off takeover entertainment. Uh, I art managing artists and everything, you know, but I needed a way to promote my artists. So we came up with the takeover files. Now, you know, since that nine years ago, takeover files, we've produced uh, we have education for the soul which mm -hmm. is another podcast with Jab is the director. We have the Takeover Files podcast, which is different from the Takeover Files. Takeover Files one-on-one -on -one interview podcast. You know, uh, I, I wanted to give my people that in my community, Darby, I'm from Darby. You feel me? I'm, I'm originally from West. I lived in West as a, a kid, baby. I moved to Darby and went to school, so I'm from Darby. You feel me? I like to say Phila Darginia because... I was in Virginia a little too. You know what I'm saying? Seven years of my life. Phil of Darjeeling. Each one told he, me he's something from everywhere, about myself, man. man. He's from everywhere. No, but so, <laughs> but so so I say that you feel me. Uh, coming up with the podcast, I just wanted to create a platform for you know my people, my community. I went to school with that didn't necessarily know how to go about um, entertainment. You know, didn't have the the microphones or the broadcasters or the studios or the space or the knowledge to do this. And I feel like I went to school for this, so. Why wouldn't I help? Why wouldn't I do my part? You know what I'm saying? So Education for the Soul, we got Take Off House Podcast, Podcast. Uh, what else we got? Damn. We, uh, we got the Takeover Bars. Yeah, Take Off. Damn, my fault. Right, bars. That's right here. Take Over Music Bars and Breakdown. Down. You yeah. feel me? Where we invite different artists to come on, promote whatever track you got. We record right here. We shoot a couple of times and we just have fun with that. That's all about promotion. Um, got a series coming up, man. I've been writing a short, a short, a movie. I'm not even gonna say a series because it's a one, one jump. But I've been writing a movie, um, to be determined. I mean, to be decided on what we're gonna announce all that. But I've been, I've been writing, man. And like I said, I've been in entertainment for so long, bro. Uh, I, I was a teacher for five years, dean of student my last year. I quit my job because throughout that five years, if I had an interview, I was leaving. Doctor J interview, oh, I'm out. I got interviewed Jesse Jackson. I'm out. I feel me. It started this out really celebrity interviews. I got over 300 of them. And once I realized I was taken away from my students, but I also wasn't following my dream, I had to leave. And I took this full throttle. Um, I was working with a million dollars worth of game for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Got in a car accident. And that really just like stopped a lot of things for me, man, March 27th. But since then, you know, I feel like God sat me down because I, this is the longest I haven't traveled in four years as far as on a flight and it's been three months and I had to go back to my, to my roots, um, understanding myself, understanding who is not Lido takeover, but who's this 30 year old Carl Thomas. Uh, you've been trapped in this Lido takeover persona for nine years now, but I had to get back to self. You know what I mean, and, and coming out of that, I feel like this is the best state that takeover has been. We just had a tank interview and we just mm -hmm. dropping consistently, man. That's the best part about this. You feel me? Take over. We have movement. We have family. Um, and we have a couple of things that hold on. A couple of things that you said because I don't want I don't want to lose these. No, my fault. You I said fifteen. You said fifteen seasons. Let's Same not gloss day. over fifty. Let's not gloss over that. Uh, let's give a round of applause and a big salute for that. So Thank you know what I'm saying. 
I've we had the house phone ringing situation. We we keep it all the way funky over here in the house. <laughs> um, fifteen years. We're not going. We're not going to gloss over fifteen. No, seasons, no, 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 not fifteen years. Now fifteen seasons. Uh, nine, nine years. Nine years officially. We're not going to gloss over that. You know what I'm saying? We're going to shine a light on that, and we're going to promote that. And you know, like I said, let's salute that. I appreciate uh, let's that, take bro. the time to smell those flowers. You know what I'm saying? Why you got those? This is another thing, though, like this is where you was going with the situation. Uh, to part them, then you said, now I'll get the car accident. Now I'm forced to sit down. You're forced to reevaluate your situation. And this also ties into what we've been talking about. Now you see who's really there and what's really there. Yeah. You see how many niggas were walking me to the ring and how many niggas was really in the score. And it's really, you know it's really there before the who. Because a lot of times, like I said, with this social media and even me traveling, you know, I was, I was just fucking walking around with Gillian Wallow every day. Like, that shit was like traveling with the Beatles. You feel me? Like, no mm-hmm. bullshit. You feel me? But it's now, all right, I'm home. So I'm seeing what's really real. You feel me? Uh, a oh, lot. yeah, because you got, you did see. So I would let you talk about it because it's your situation. But once you get the first joint, like you said, I get Dr. J on the interview. Now them same niggas that you've been telling, yo, you know, I be doing this, John, and they ain't got nothing to say. Now they reposting it. Damn, you see my cousin doing it. He out here making it happen. You get all of that type shit. I'm going to keep <laughs> The repost and all that, really, bro. I've been doing the celebrity. And, bro, my first interview was KRS-One. Second one, PNB Rock. You feel me? This is in Virginia in 2015. So I've been doing the interviews with the major celebrities, but it took the million dollars worth of game for people to start. The reposting and the 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 showing the love and but I've realized before that I never cared about the the views I never cared about the followers you feel me because you never know you got ten views you don't know who in them ten views but also I also appreciated the process I embraced the process embraced the growth because I always said bro this is not a race I'm not racing nobody at first my only competition was uh, uh what I used to say my only competition in the Brussels club then it turned into my only competition million dollars worth of game then I started mm-hmm. producing my competition you feel me then it turned into I don't have any competition because Jeez. at the end of the day bro we all got a journey bro and we all at, like like people always say the world your the world doesn't revolve around you that's it does my world revolves around me because if I die I'm not gonna know what the fuck is going on Regardless of what, I, I'm not going to be able to see shit. So it's up to me. Copy, yeah, <laughs> my world, yeah, the world in a general well, sense. I, yeah, I don't copy. have kids either, bro. So I mm-hmm. also understood just within this time frame. You feel me? Me being home, my perception of a lot of things are different from a lot of other people because I don't have kids. So yeah, you just got right you now, to worry about. Yeah, right now it's my world. I ain't got to pay my rent. I, you know what? I'm gonna pay my rent the 29th. You feel me? Right before the next joint hit. If I got a kid, no, nah, we can't stretch that. You feel me? I got to handle this. I, now I'll invest in takeover before I invest in myself, before <laughs> I eat, bro. Like, bro, I will not eat for two or three days, bro, not even realizing because I'm in here editing because uh, I'll need a new backdrop and I'm trying to find out information on stuff. You feel me? So, like, your world revolves around you, though. That's my message. Just live without malice. You live without malice, stay prayed up. Your world can revolve around you and you're going to reap all the benefits, all the fruits of your labor. Because hard work don't get unnoticed, man. Especially when you you feel me when you have faith. Two more uh, joints that I need from y'all before we go. I didn't prep y'all for this because I forgot before we started. Like I said, I was running a little late. No, uh, but paid talent like you, know what I'm saying paid talent like us can handle these type of things hot on the spot. And we gonna do this now. Hype on the hot seat. Y'all both throw one question at me at random. It could be about whatever. You throw one question at me each. And I'll give y'all whatever the answer is. Uh, you want to go first? Or? Yeah, I, I asked him the other day, man. He couldn't answer, man. Who are your top five rappers? Top five? My All brother. Time. My brother, CDF. <laughs> um, Biggie, Tupac, Jadakiss, Mac. Mm, Mac. Mac. Beanie, nigga. Oh, okay. Did he just <laughs> asked who's Mac. See? We going to have to get him out of He's going to have to get out He's, he's, he's Darby. Yeah, Darby. I'm Darby. He's Darby. 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 That's different. We got to get him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mac, for those who are outside of the Philadelphia oh, area, fuck that. He's international hype. I think it's Mac Miller, International hype is not just a hashtag. I, you look, he said Mac, Mac Miller. <laughs> he's just a spectacle. <laughs> All right. 
Hey, I got a question, not, you, bro. So yeah, he he's he's on mute for the rest of the episode. Hey, We're not dealing with him anymore. That's that right? yeah, no, yeah, that I, was that was my brother. That was that, that's one that he's biased. Copy. I ain't got no problem admitting that. Hawk, big, Jada Kiss, Mac. <laughs> That's a good song. So, so I got a question for you, bro. Um, it's like a two part question. If that's cool, um, that's cool. The, the first one is, how do you balance uh just just being a, a husband, a father, and an entrepreneur, um, and also producing a podcast, editing the podcast, making sure you drop every Monday, send out. You feel me? Like, how how do you balance all of that? What's important. You balance out how important this is to you. How much do you really want it? What do you really love? The same thing, like you said, I don't love that much shit, but when I love it, I love hard. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to half do things. And if I put my name on something, then we must go through with this. I put my name on my wife, so she must be taken care of. You know what I'm saying? On it. <laughs> I tell her all the time that she don't understand how much weight you being my wife is, because I hope you're listening to this one. If you tell me hype, I need the world is stopping. Like, if I look at my phone, there's two people that have a picture on my phone, my mom and my wife. If either one of these photos come up with a picture, I don't care what this job is. They need me for whatever. It might be, hey, I don't need really to talk that much, or I just needed to say this copy, but we answering this phone. Right. So it's very easy to prioritize her and my kids because they are the reason why I'm doing anything that I'm doing. It's so that I can make sure that they don't ever have to say we need or we, no, they can say we want because, you know, you will always have wants and desires, but they don't ever. I don't need them to ever have to need. And that's how you manage that. Now, all of the. All of the hustles kind of come and stem from this. They all stem from the ability to reach out to somebody in London to reach out to somebody in Canada, to reach out to somebody in Germany or South Carolina, North Carolina, anywhere. And I can turn <clears throat> one download into two jackets or turn that into three jerseys or turn that into a league of jerseys. Or, you know what I'm saying? I've done cleaning jobs where I came back to finish the situation. They said, damn, you said such and such on the podcast last week. Like, damn, I didn't know you was listening. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so everything kind of ties in and snowballs together which is why I always tell people, like, I don't need a segue to make all of this happen. The same way, like, when I when we met, I didn't need a segue to make none of that happen. All that shit was natural. I had the tickets in my pocket for the live show. I got the jacket on that has the podcast name. I'm wearing the sweatsuit. Like, you know what I'm I got sweatpants on right now. <laughs> but I got all of that. I need some of so I got to grab some of you. I'm about to say, I I <laughs> but... Everything is like I'm a you're a walking billboard for whatever your situation is. So that's the whole situation with the barber capes. This is a presence of me not even having to be there. You gonna walk in the barbershop and go, damn, ain't that like without me having to say nothing to be there? I don't need to prioritize it because it all kind of goes together, it all attacks it together. And if you intertwine and put everything like that, because I got cleaning jobs that I do with my daughter who's 10. I got cleaning jobs to do with my wife. <laughs> That's so that you make hustle. sure everything, you make sure everything goes together because it's like, damn, if I know I'm going to be here for four hours today, I ain't going to see them or I ain't going to spend time with them. So if I pull her in on this with me, now we're spending time together while we're still making sure H2H cleaning is handling his job. That's right. Uh, so I, got, I got one more for you now, bro. One more question. Yeah. Keep on the hot seat. All right. Um, now we all know, you feel me, a couple of years ago, we went through COVID, the weirdest uh, time that in our life that we ever experienced, something like no one's ever experienced. Um, what did you learn the most about yourself during that time? Mm, that there's nothing that I wouldn't, uh, there's nothing that I would put above them. Uh, because trying to manage all of those different things before I had all of the different branches of the company, when I still was doing my old podcast, it would be like, nah, we're going to be up here all day doing the podcast, sending it out and all of that. And I got my daughter with me, but she's here, but I'm not, we're not together. Because, like, we're here, but I ain't here. Or I'm in the house with them, and it's like, yeah, I'm here, but I ain't here. And my wife would always say, you always on the phone. And it's like, yeah, I'm always on the phone because I'm trying to make sure we good. But, no, nah, you need to really, like, be here. And once we got to that situation where it was like, my wife was pregnant. My daughter that just came in here before we started, she was happened during the shutdown. She came out during the shutdown. <laughs> 
Oh, so, so not a pandemic baby. She a pre-pandemic baby. Yeah, so my wife was pregnant when all of that started. Me and wow. my wife was both essential workers, so it was like if I'm going out this door and we risking it all every day, I didn't see nobody, wasn't around nobody. We've seen her mom, my mom, and I seen my brother if he came here. Right. <laughs> like, other than that, I ain't messing with nobody because they are more important than any and everything else. Absolutely. And it took kind of once, like we talk about the Chris situation. That happened right before the shutdown. Me and Chris talked the day before he died, and he told me, damn, my wife pregnant. I said, yo, my wife pregnant. And those are the things that kind of teach you, like, nothing is promised, and you must prioritize what is important. And like I said, it takes a while for you to get there, but hopefully we all get there. Mm-hmm. Man, I love that. I love that. But Y'all, I appreciate y'all coming on. This was definitely the first of many. That is episode 109. We are out. I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.